morning, good morning, and welcome to Breakfast with Bridget here on News 6 Plus. Click Orlando.com and our YouTube channel for News 6. It is Tuesday, October 22nd. I'm Bridget Ellison. Good to be with you. And this morning we have a live interview coming up with a doctor about the FDA's new guidelines surrounding mammograms. So we'll cover all the details with that for all ages, all genders, even the issues with breast density that many of you know about if you have had to go through this testing. So we'll get that expert insight from a doctor here locally from Orlando Health in just a few moments. But we're getting ready to get you out the door. And Chief Meteorologist Candace Campos has our pinpoint accurate forecast. We've been enjoying some mild weather, which is really helping out with, you know, getting out to get things cleaned up since the hurricane, uh, getting uh, lots of things done. But I think we're are we trying to get we're trying to get Candace, but we'll we'll get to her in just a moment. But uh, oh, there she is. So what we're dealing with, though, is some really mild weather, Candace. Mm -hmm. And we, that doesn't mean no rain, though. We still had some sprinkles throughout the day, which we need, uh, but no washouts. A couple of spotty showers really can't be ruled out at the end of the day as we're going to continue to see that strong breeze in place. So the winds will be kicking up between about 10 to 15, a little stronger along the coastline. So that's going to be bringing in a couple more of those scattered showers mm -hmm. like we dealt with yesterday. Yeah. So let's take it to the map, show you what's going on across central Florida. It's a breezy afternoon. Once again, we're going to be dealing with those isolated showers. Now we are going to be dealing with that cold front that's going to be coming in late this week into early next week. Now, with that being said, is this going to be a cold front that is going to be bringing a lot of rain or a lot of um you know, a big punch of cold air behind it. That is not the case. This is just going to be one of those cold fronts that are coming through. You don't even know they're coming through. But once they do, it's kind of reinforcing those nice conditions. And then uh, let's talk tropics real quick. No concerns for us here in Central Florida. Let me just start off by saying that. But there is a but in that we are watching Tropical Storm Oscar. It is pretty close to our coastline, uh, which is interesting because when it's not a concern, you could have a system so close to home, but if you trust the forecast, you don't even know what's out there right at that point. Unfortunately, you can't say the same for Cuba right now. They were dealing with a lot of rain, mudslides, um, flooding issues just because Oscar sat over the eastern tip of Cuba for so long. But now it's making its way into the Bahamas and will continue to push out to the open waters. But we are going to be watching, going to be watching closely the Caribbean. There's no area to watch right now, but there is a couple little uh, features that certainly will uh, kind of start to light up, though, as we head into uh, next week around Halloween. Um, I left my clicker, so I have to roll. Hold it a second. Okay. So this is Tropical Storm Oscar, still looking at uh, sustained winds of 40 miles per hour. We are going to continue to see the potential for that to maintain um, pretty, you know, decent tropical characteristics as we head into the afternoon and early next week. So just do be aware of that, that that could be roughing up our surf. Uh, look at the tropical depression here. You can see we are going to continue to watch these little icons here that are going to start developing um, a, a chance. Not a very good chance, but still there will be the potential that as we head into around Halloween, there will be that chance of dealing with a little bit of uh, more tropical development. Does that mean we're going to get a big time named storm? Does this mean that we're going to be dealing with a tropical system locally here? No, but it is the end of October, beginning of November, and we still just can't let our guards down at this point in time because at the end of the day, hurricane season does run through November 30th. All right, let's look at those wind speeds right now. They're still clocking upwards of about 15 to 25 miles per hour, and that's certainly going to be a concern as we head into the afternoon as we will still see that potential for a rough surf, um, High, high surf advisory, high risk of rip currents out there, as well as a small craft advisory. Looking here at the clouds and rain forecast, you can see those scattered showers continuing to kind of clip parts of the coastline. Not extremely widespread, Bridget, but in and out clouds, that breeze will continue. And within some of that cloud cover, there will be that potential of dealing with a couple of those scattered showers. In the meantime, though, just a beautiful setup for today. Tons of sunshine, highs near normal. We're in those mid 80s. And then as we head into the evening hours tonight, upper 60s, low 70s, about 70 degrees there in Kissimmee. 
74 degrees in Melbourne. Right now out the door, it's just a nice start. You don't really need a jacket or anything like that. It's just going to be a nice comfortable stretch. And you can see that rain chance sits about 20% throughout the afternoon between about one and about five o'clock in the afternoon. And as you get results here with your full seven day forecast, you can see mid eighties across the board. We'll have that cold front come through late Thursday into Friday, reassuring in Another batch of just really nice weather. Highs and highs and lows will be staying near normal, which is certainly uh, a welcome change after we dealt with such hot and sweltering conditions all summer long. But um, overall, not too bad. Upper 60s will be our overnight lows. So, you know, just maybe you want to take a nice little stroll outside, maybe take lunch outside or dinner outside, uh, you know, just kind of embrace this nice change. Um, looks like by the time we head into after Halloween, that's when we'll start to see some of those warmer temperatures start creeping back in. But as of now, it looks like we will have a pretty near normal uh, Halloween on, on tap. Very nice. So uh, not going to just sweat it out in some of those hotter costumes so far. Depends what costume you're talking about, Bridget. Well, like the one you showed me. So my daughter's going, uh, my youngest wants to be Elsa from Frozen 2. She was very specific. She didn't want Frozen 1. Uh, but she wanted to be Elsa. Um, so no one's Olaf with her. So I decided that I'm going to be Olaf. <laughs> she says, Mom, why don't you be Anna? But I don't like Anna's costume from Frozen 2. I like Anna's costume from Frozen 1. Well, so what's I don't the moose's mix name? What's the moose's name? I forget the moose's oh, name. Um, oh, my God. It's Sven and... No, Sven. Sven. It's Kristoff and Sven. You want me to be a moose instead? Snowman, I don't know if moose. that's cooler. Probably not. No. Yeah. A lot of bad jokes around that. Let's just go. I'm going to go. I'm going to leave. Bye-bye. Right, Bye-bye. Bye -bye. Thanks, Candace. Escape. Goodbye. All right. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Candace. So we do have some top headlines to get to. Like I said, we will uh, get to the doctor uh, after our first commercial break. But first up today, uh, big development in the murder trial of Sarah Boone. She's expected to take the stand today. So New Six's Angie Quesada has more on that. He's begging to let, for you to let him out. You sound, you're laughing in the beginning, and then in the end it sounds kind of like a no. Not malicious. Sarah Boone, the Orange County woman accused of killing her boyfriend by leaving him in a zipped up suitcase in 2020, insists what happened was not intentional. The jurors watching hours of video yesterday of her being questioned by detectives. It was not intentional. I will put my hand on the Bible. It was not intentional. Boone says she and George Torres were playing a drunken game of hide and seek at the time. So you all think that it's like, oh good, I got him in there, now I'm going to go sleep? Is that what you guys are trying to assume? Or trying to, like, we're just, the video is very portraying of the opposite of what you told us. The state medical examiner showed jurors diagrams and photos of injuries, she says, were consistent of being hit with a baseball bat and the suitcase being thrown down a flight of stairs. Both the state is accusing Boone of doing. And so we'll be following that, of course. We've been keeping you updated every day on what's happening with the Boone murder trial. Now to a case of a dog napping. Right now there are two Frenchies that are missing. Their owner is out of town, and um, a family member was dog-sitting the dogs, but apparently there was a break-in of some sort, and now those dogs are missing. New Six's Treasure Roberts has more on the search for these dogs and how you can help. We're angry. We're worried. You know, and uh, we're, ner we're nervous. Also vulnerable. That's why this Windermere woman spoke to me over Zoom and asked that we don't show her face. When they get caught, we're just afraid, you know, are they going to come back for more? Friday, she was out of town and her son was on his way back home. He had uh, gone um, to eat and came back and um, found the house was ransacked. Her son recalled what he noticed. My whole back door was smashed in. Shattered glass was everywhere, but the most heartbreaking part, French Bulldogs Bodie and Asher were stolen. We're very emotional and it, it has me sick to my stomach. The dog nappers were caught on her ring camera. The woman says after busting in, the suspects unlocked the front door. They were seen going in the front door together, then one after the other running back outside, each with a dog in hand. These Frenchies belong to her sister who is currently out of the country. How did your sister react when you told her 
that her dogs were stolen. She's devastated. Um, you know, uh, pets become a part of your family. And unfortunately, she was never able to have children. These are her children. It took them a long time to decide uh, what they wanted. And, um, you know, now uh, they finally got them and, uh, and they're gone. Her son called the police to report the robbery. She told me officers found blood in the home and dusted for prints. Do you almost feel unsafe in your own home, which was once your safe place? Absolutely. This has been my... I've always called it my castle. This is my castle. This is my safety. This is my safe space. I'm really considering wanting to move. Outside of the concern for her family's safety, she hopes the dogs are okay, asking that anyone who knows anything call the police. The only thing I could hope is that whoever has them isn't mistreating them. We just hope to be able to get them back. It's, it's all we want is we, we want them back. Treasure Roberts getting results in New Six. So anyone who might have information on those missing dogs that were stolen from that home in Windermere is urged to call police. So hopefully we'll have an update on that. Remember yesterday we talked to Matt uh, early on breakfast about him coming in to go out in results one and get results in real time. So we wanted to follow up this morning and see how it went. Here's Matt. It is 8.08 a.m. We're about to get results in real time. It's time to make some phone calls and figure out who we're going to help today. Yeah. Hey, this is Matt Austin with Channel 6. How are you doing today? Did you have damage from Hurricane Milton? My roof got ripped up and it's a mobile home. Okay, we're getting ready to head to Apopka. She just sent me these photos right here so I know what we're looking at. And this is some of the damage she's dealing with, including what looks like some mold so let's go see it for ourselves hey brian yes hey my friend this is matt austin over at channel six how you doing today so on the way there i called our partners at bfar contracting uh, so we have a viewer with an issue with a roof today we're here in a pop canal and i am with Brittany wedgwood who has damage from hurricane milton the inside of her house is wet and uh, she's just trying to figure out things thanks for calling us out Brittany. Mm -hmm. How are we doing right now? Um, we're trying to make do and get by with what we have and trying to find the help that we can get. Mm -hmm. I mean, just trying to keep positive. Yeah. About an hour later, Brian showed up to assess the situation. So, I, I mean, this probably was manufactured in the 60s or 70s, and, and the codes just are, are nothing near what they are today. Mm -hmm. So what was allowed then isn't allowed today. And uh, everything that is done today, even on a re-roof, has to be done to current codes. So that's what throws us into the problem. Not the news Brittany and her family wanted to hear. The age of the home and the fact that it's a mobile home are going to make the repairs hard. What is keeping your the um, water out of your house? Just bisqueen plastic from Home Depot and uh, roofing tape because it was only like a hundred and something bucks to put on. So there is some water intrusion right now. The roofers are going to try to seal it up the best they can so that future storms in the coming days, any rain coming in will be out of the house. But the roof was not the only problem. When power left this house, all of the food inside spoiled. So we called our partners at Light Orlando, who pulled some strings and got their friends, the Catholic Charities, to bring over a ton of fresh food for the family. So this family should get a good amount of food to be able to get them through a little while? Hopefully, yeah. Juan's, Juan's gonna hook them up. We're gonna take care of them today. You feel, you feel okay about things? I'm still trying to process things, but yes, I yeah. feel great. Fantastic. Well, if you look on your front porch there, it is just full of food. What does it make you think? What, how does it make you feel? <laughs> Hopeful yeah. and happy. And I feel like, you know, somebody. Yeah. You are somebody. Oh, thank so, you. Did News 6, were we able to get results for you today? Very quickly. And a lot of results, especially with the roof and everything. So. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm glad we could help. Thank you. So at the beginning of this story, we thought to fix this roof, it would cost about $10,000. But BFAR Contracting took a look at the satellite pictures of this home and found a different solution, maybe a silicon coating. And they've already called the manufacturer called GAF, who says they will donate the materials. BFAR says instead of $10,000, it's going to cost closer to two. That's getting results in Apopka. I'm Matt Austin, News 6. So that turned out really well. And we have some more follow-up 
to this on clickorlando.com. If you're looking for answers from FEMA about ways to get support and ways to get resources to get repairs or anything of that nature, click on that story and submit your questions because we'll be talking to a senior FEMA official to get some answers. So check that on, out on clickorlando.com right now. We're taking a quick break. We're back with more about the new FDA guidelines around mammograms since it is October and we're working on spreading more awareness around breast cancer prevention. We'll be right back. All right, welcome back. You know, last Friday we had pink on everywhere. We had a pink news six bug and we talked about uh, mammogram day. And of course, you know, October is known as breast cancer awareness month. And so this morning we're talking to Dr. Jeffrey Smith, a breast cancer surgeon at Orlando Health. Thanks for taking a few moments to be with us. Honored to be on with you, Bridget, uh, and, and really appreciate the opportunity to talk during October, as you as you mentioned, with it being Breast Cancer Awareness Month and uh, to promote the, the benefits of mammography and screening and early detection. So thank you very much. Well, and you know, this is something that you're working on every day. So what's what's really encouraging for you from the standpoint of um, the care you're able to provide from the levels of awareness, prevention, and, and even surgery right now? So as, as you kind of alluded to, one of the things that we really try to promote is uh, early detection. Uh, the earlier breast cancer is uh, identified, uh, the, the better the outcome. Uh, once somebody, unfortunately, may have a diagnosis of breast cancer, uh, we work very hard to put together a team uh, to identify the specific type of cancer and then, and then also to put together a, a treatment plan that uh, uh, will hopefully generate the best outcomes possible. And so it can include uh, further workup with our radiology colleagues, but then also with uh, surgery, medical oncology, radiation oncology, uh, sometimes plastic surgery as well. Uh, and then ultimately uh, survivorship programs. And uh, we even incorporate lifestyle programs with nutrition and exercise and mental and psychological support to help uh, patients throughout the entire journey. And it really seems like we're seeing more and more early detection, but unfortunately, I mean, we still see people succumbing to the disease. So it's not something that we can afford to sort of get complacent with or let our guard down on right now. Yeah, so so I mean we're we're actually seeing increasing rates, especially in younger women, and and that's certainly quite distressing uh, uh, to to everyone involved. Uh, and and again, you know, I think the we come back to uh, early detection and screening. And so uh, from from a woman's point of view, if you ever feel something that doesn't seem quite right, if something persists, uh, uh, just kind of body awareness and and being in tune with yourself. If you think something isn't, isn't quite right, uh, then that certainly prompts further evaluation uh, and then potentially testing and, and uh, uh, diagnosis. Uh, mammograms uh, are, are probably our best screening tool in terms of identifying early stage breast cancer. Uh, and, and it's something that uh, uh, we certainly promote across the board. Uh, but if you have other risk factors, if you uh, have a family history of breast cancer, if you've had prior biopsies or have dense breast tissue, those are all things that we would then consider even increasing uh, our surveillance and, and uh, uh, just kind of our overall uh, uh, trying to be as, as proactive as possible in terms of identifying this. And so what is it with the guidelines saying every other year then in terms of like, like who would that apply to versus someone who probably would possibly need more frequent screenings? So guidelines are, are just that, they're, they're guidelines. And, and so there's never any one size fits all. Uh, those guidelines with respect to every other year mammograms apply best to patients that are of very low risk in terms of breast cancer, uh, but patients that are at, at higher risk uh, and those can be from family history. Uh, it can be certain uh, uh, hormonal exposures. Uh, it can be prior biopsies, and it can also be dense breast tissue. Uh, all of those things 
are evaluated during a, a visit with your clinician. And, and if you're at moderate or high risk, uh, we would still consider doing annual mammograms. Mm -hmm. uh, and then for those patients that have uh, denser breast tissue or have other risk factors, uh, sometimes we'll even consider supplemental imaging, uh, which may include ultrasound or MRI. Mm -hmm. I know there's that issue of the density that comes up a lot. And so from, from speaking with people and even some of these recent reports that have come out from some of the health journals, we get scared. We don't want to go back for the follow-ups. It's, it's frustrating, you know, going through the additional screenings and, and sort of the emotional toll as well. What, what can you say to that in terms of just how to function if you're a person who constantly deals with the density issue that comes up from your screenings and your tests? Yeah, so I mean, certainly we don't, we, we want patients to be engaged in their, in their health and, and whether it's screening for breast cancer uh, or uh, living or a healthy, living a healthier lifestyle for uh, cardiovascular health. Uh, it, we, we certainly want patients to be uh, engaged in their, in their health. Uh, and so some of that is knowing your own risk factors. Uh, some of it's going to be engaging in healthy lifestyle activities in terms of exercise and good nutrition, getting good sleep, uh, good community ties. Uh, so we, we certainly understand that, uh, unfortunately, uh, sometimes some of the interventions that we do can be uh, a little bit overwhelming. Sometimes they can be anxiety provoking, and that's certainly not the intent, uh, but uh, unfortunately that's, that's the reality for some patients. And, and uh, we, we try to do the best that we can do to, to minimize that. Um, but I screening guess what I'm is, saying is we've seen some drop off in people following up because they are sort of tired of that cycle of you have dense tissue, we need you to come back in, we need to do additional tests. And so you don't want to lose those people, but yet they're like, oh, you know, I got, I got that dense tissue result again, and I've got to go back again for another. So it, it can be a little draining, um, but you just really can't afford to take that. Yeah. So, it. so unfortunately, dense breast tissue is, is in and of itself an independent risk factor for, for breast cancer. So those are, to your point, exactly the patients that we want to continue to screen and, yeah. and want to be proactive. Um, one of the things that we can try to do is that patients that have known dense breast tissue, uh, we do try to combine the testing so that you're not being called back multiple times and you try to kind of inco incorporate everything into, into uh, one visit so that uh, you can kind of get that, uh, get that out of the way. And hopefully, you know, we, we certainly hope that there's a, a clean bill of health, so to speak, and, and that uh, then uh, we don't need to do anything further. But if, if something's found, uh, first of all, not, not everything that is found is breast cancer. And so, you know, I would try to be somewhat reassuring in that if we're working up a, a mass or something that we see on a, mm -hmm. on a mammogram that... Uh, uh, it's just that we're just working working something up and trying to get some more information. Uh, but if it is breast cancer, we we certainly want to identify it as early as possible. Again, early detection and, and early diagnosis uh, projects a far better outcome mm -hmm. than if there's a delay in treatment or delay in diagnosis. And so, what is what is your um elevator pitch or your dinner table talk when people want to know about some of the best practices or some of the best diets or you know what your recommend recommendations are around making sure you stay healthy and that goes for men as well yeah so so in terms of uh first of all getting getting outside moving uh getting good sleep uh we we live in a world of screens and televisions and lights and you know a lot of times our our nights are brighter than what they should and we don't sleep well. And I think that's really a cornerstone to uh, overall health. In terms of a diet, there's, there's no one single diet or, or uh, kind of niche diet that I think I would promote specifically other than saying that uh, a natural diet is, is best. 
uh, we live, unfortunately, in the United States, we live with a food system that has a lot of processed foods, a lot of packaged foods and things that just uh, aren't natural. And, and so I think trying to get back as close to a natural diet as what we can, uh, getting some exercise is certainly beneficial across the board. Uh, and then, and then having good social ties. Uh, we live in a, in a world where, uh, loneliness is, is, a is becoming almost epidemic in, in its own nature. And that has severe consequences, not only for our psychological health, but even our, even our physical health as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It all ties together. All right. Where can we go for more information before I let you go, Dr. Smith? Well, so I would, I would direct uh, to our, our Orlando Health Cancer Institute website, uh, uh, and uh, there's a lot of good information there. Uh, if there's certainly any questions, we'd we'd be happy to try to help out, uh, and uh, we're we're here for you if you need us. But uh, as I, you know, hopefully not. But uh, uh, we uh, certainly appreciate the again the opportunity to talk this morning and. Uh, Again, I would certainly with with October being Breast Cancer Awareness Month, if you haven't had a mammogram in a while, I would certainly, again, promote uh, getting that. That's probably our best. Uh, again, it's our best screening tool for early detection. Super. Well, we appreciate your time this morning and uh, hope to see you again soon right here. All right. Thank All you right. very much. Take care. Thanks. All right, so we are out of time, but we'll be back at noon with more news and weather updates for you. And we'll be right back here tomorrow at 730 with more breakfast. Have a great day.